stoic tables or stoichiometry tables are incredibly important tools used by chemical engineers and chemists to keep track of various species inside a reactor or during the course of a reaction in terms of a conversion. And this conversion is something that is dependent on your limiting reactant. And identifying the limiting reactant is the most important thing to get uh, to begin a stoic table. Messing up or getting the wrong limiting reactant can have very bad consequences later on. You'll have a complete stoic table, but everything will be, uh, you'll have a systemic error. And so what I'm going to do in this video is show you guys how we create stoic tables based on a generic reaction. And in this example, we'll have little a moles of some reactant called big A and some little b moles of some reactant big B forming uh, react, uh, product C and products D. And so the stoic coefficients would be little a, little b, little c, and little d. And these reactions can be reversible, so we can still use stoic tables uh, even if we're working with reversible reactions. And typically, uh, especially in the textbooks by Folger, um, or Fogler, um, what we see is A is commonly the limiting reactant. And so uh, in this example, we will assume that our species A is our limiting reactant. So a stoic table will have uh, four columns. The first will tell us what species we are working with. So we can have species A, B, C, D, as well as inerts. And so inerts are any molecules or that do not participate in our reaction. The next column we have will be the initial uh, amount, or I should probably make this a lowercase i just to uh, differentiate it, um, the initial quantity of our various species present. And uh, to draw a picture, just to make things easier to follow, what I'll assume is we'll have some kind of uh, inlet stream, and it will have uh, some moles of A with a molar flow rate FA0, and some moles of reactant B with a molar flow rate FB0. Um, sorry. And it will go into some generic reactor and out will be a stream with uh, F sub J. So F sub J can be any species A through I, and uh, it will be different from our inlet stream. So in this diagram we have here, the initial term will be F A naught moles of A per second, F B naught, moles of B per second coming in. We'll assume we have no uh, products in our inlet stream, and then we'll have some molar flow rate uh, of our inerts called Fi0. And so the next column that we look at in a stoic table is the change. And in by, so, so by making sure that we have correctly defined our limiting reactant, the change column will correspond to minus Fa0 times x. So uh, it's very important to make sure we get this part right because it will also dictate uh, everything else except for our inert species because they do not participate in the reaction, they'll have zero. So in the case of B, what we'll have uh, for our change would be minus b over a times f a naught x. And then for the uh, reactant c, we'll have uh, lowercase c, the stoichiometric coefficient for species c, divided by the stoic coefficient for species a, times f a naught times x. And then we'll also have the same for our product d. And uh, at this point, 
it is important to note that these if we have negative signs uh, for our reactants so whatever's on the left side of your overall chemical reaction will have a negative sign on it and everything on the right hand side will have a positive sign on it and if we have inerts present uh, it will have no change in the uh, number of moles running through your generic reactor. So this generic reactor can be a CSTR, it can be a PFR, a PBR, a BSTR. So we're just going to um, keep things, uh, because we are working with flow rates, uh, this will have to be some kind of continuous reactor. So a plug flow reactor, packed bed reactor, or a CSTR. If we are working with a batch stir tank reactor, we will, instead of working with molar flow rates be working with uh, simply the number of moles and in that case uh, so I'll just make a little note here for BSTRs all we do is switch uh, FA or we'll call it F sub I little i with N sub I and uh, that's the only difference the uh, key point that uh, that may be a pitfall for some people is to jump into defining uh, concentrations and looking at the concentrations of species in your stoic table. That is a big mistake because if we are working with gas phase reactions where the number of moles uh, is not balanced on both sides, so if we have two moles of gas forming three moles of gas, we would have a volume expansion in our reactor and in that case, the concentrations will be uh, of your reactants will becoming uh, even more dilute and everything becomes skewed. So sticking with molar flow rates and number of moles is the way to go with stoic tables. And we can easily convert back into uh, concentration later on. And the next, so getting to the next column in a typical uh, stoic table, we will analyze the final outlet flow rate um, of what's coming out. And I'll call this in. So in this case, looking at what is coming out for our species A, we'll have FA0 times 1 minus X. So just summing these two middle columns gives us what our outlet column is. And the same can go for B. Um, and at this point, what we'll often do, and what they do in the textbooks, is define a variable called theta. And this makes things nice for us because we can write what's coming out of B as FA0 times theta sub B, and then minus B over A times F. Oh, I'm sorry, just times x. We can times x. And theta sub b, or theta sub i to keep things generic, is equal to fi naught over fa naught. And theta sub i can um, is simply based off whatever is coming in your inlet stream of whatever particular component you're analyzing divided by the inlet molar flow rate of your limiting reactant A. And in the case of species C and D, theta sub C and theta sub C will, D will have values of zero. And so we can continue this pattern getting to FA naught times theta sub C plus C over A times X and then F A naught times theta sub D plus D over A times X and F sub I naught because our uh, inert species have not changed during the course of this reactor. And at this point, what we usually do, because one of the main goals with stoic tables is to get our species in terms of uh, conversions defined 
Uh, so the goal is typically to find c sub i as a function of x or f sub i as some function of x. And we can do this pretty easily with the information that we are given in a stoic table. And to do that, it is uh, useful for us to define and sum the uh, total molar flow rates coming in and out of our reactor, for our flow reactors. And so in that case, what we do is we take the sum of our inlet, sorry, and our outlet uh, columns, so <laughs> uh, cheating a little bit, extending these lines, if we were to look at uh, this column here would be ft naught, which tells us the total molar inlet flow rate is simply the sum of fi naught, and then in this case we'll have ft, the number, the total molar flow rate of uh, species exiting our reactor, that will be equal to ft naught plus this special variable called delta times fa naught x. So this is a very good relationship to understand and uh, defining what delta is is very important. So delta is equal to minus 1 over nu a, the stoichiometric coefficient of your limiting reactant, times the sum of nu j for all j. And uh, what that would be in this reaction, um, these stoic coefficients, nu a, so just to give a, an example of this, if we had one mole of a uh, forming, or plus two moles of b forming three moles of c and four moles of d, the way we would evaluate what delta is would be minus 1 over minus 1 because uh, because A is a reactant we put a negative sign in front of its stoichiometric coefficient and then we sum all of the stoichiometric coefficients in this chemical reaction which would be minus 1, minus 2, plus 3, and plus 4. And that would be equivalent to positive 1 times and then minus 1 minus 2 is minus 3 so plus 3 is 0 so plus 4 so what this tells us is that delta has a value of 4, positive 4. And uh, this ft value is used to help us find what the concentration is for our species later on. So if we are working with a gas phase reaction in which uh, we have some kind of mole change, so this would be a good example of uh, mole change in a gas phase reaction. We have forming uh, many more moles of gases uh, on the right side of our equation than we are on the left, um, even if this was a reversible reaction. Um, because we'll have some kind of volume expansion, we have to take that into account in our calculation for the concentration of each individual species as it's reacting through our reactor. And so what we do is we define, we use the value we found here for delta to find to define another value called epsilon. And epsilon is equal to y a naught times delta. Y a naught is the uh, molar ratio of the uh, limiting reactant. So in this case, y a naught would equal f a naught over f t naught, the sum of all the inlet molar flow rates. And once we've done that, uh, we can, uh, once we know the value of epsilon, because we know the value of delta and y a naught, we can now um, use it to figure out what the volumetric flow rate is as a function of uh, conversion throughout our reactor. So for flow reactors, what we would have 
is our volumetric flow rate V is equal to our inlet molar uh, inlet volumetric flow rate V naught times P naught over P, your initial or your inlet pressure divided by your outlet pressure times your uh, temperature at your outlet divided by your temperature at your inlet times one plus epsilon times x. And we only need to worry about this kind of stuff when we are working with gas um, for gases only. And if we have, so assuming we have an isobaric, sorry, if we have an isobaric uh, reactor, this quantity will equal one. If we have an isothermal reactor, this quantity will equal one because T will equal T naught. And if we had some kind of reaction, like two moles of A plus two moles of B, form two moles of C and two moles of D, because delta will be equal to zero because we are not forming any additional moles of product if these are all gases, uh, delta will equal zero, therefore epsilon will equal zero. Uh, we do not need to worry about um, defining uh, a, a, the function of your volumetric flow rate in terms of your conversion x. So um, this depends on the value of delta that we calculated above. And at this point, uh, the reason we would want to find what our volumetric flow rate V is, is because we can now figure out what the concentration uh, is from our uh, outlet molar flow rate or our molar flow rate at a particular conversion. And so if we go back to the definition of, uh, so if we wanted to analyze some generic component I, F sub I will equal C sub I times V. And what we do is we know what V is from this relationship above here by defining delta. We know what F sub I is because uh, we can get that from our stoic table. So F sub I would correspond to one of these values up here. If we take species C, for example, um, and we can now define what C sub I is by dividing the molar flow rate F I by the volumetric flow rate V. And what we'll note is that uh, this has allowed us to define the concentration of C in terms of these variables which are dependent on conversion. And so the reason we want to do this uh, is because it allows us to rewrite reactions in terms of conversion. So if we had, uh, for example, looking back at the mole balance on a uh, PFR, when we have um, FA naught times dx dv is equal to minus RA, and we arrive at the relationship, the required volume of our reactor is equal to FA naught times the integral x in to x out of dx over minus ra by integrating. Um, ra, this is a function of x, your conversion. And so uh, this stoic table allows us to figure out how our rate of reaction is dependent on the conversion. And uh, I'll stop this for now. Hopefully you guys find this useful. Let me know if you have any questions and thanks for watching.